All right, hello, 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 cheers, Kevin here, and welcome back to Minecraft Agoraphobia, where today we have villagers villaging behind us. So that's very exciting. Hello, villagers. We have a blacksmith, a butcher, I mean, I don't know, okay, takes me, gets emeralds. We have a librarian, we have a cartographer, we have some farmer, well, we have some brown coats, which are important for farmy things. What are you? You're a Fletcher and a fisherman, and a nitwit that does absolutely nothing. So, uh, lots of very exciting things. The one thing that we don't have just yet is a priest, and we need a priest to get Eyes of Ender, um, which we need in order to get to the nether, because um, we want to send a drone in there, but if we if we send a drone in there without a, a chunk loader update uh, upgrade, uh, well, the nether won't be loaded, and so the drone won't be able to do anything. But uh, with the chunk loader upgrade, it keeps the chunk that it's in loaded even when a player is not there, and that's what we need. Um, today, uh, we're going to do some odd jobs, kind of continue on our current existing projects. And by the way, that uh, that village has already started to populate itself really darn quickly. I just had to throw up a lot of, lot of doors, um, perhaps too many doors, some may say. Um, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Also may need to figure out a good system for disposing of villagers um, at a, some point in time, especially if we end up uh, kind of hitting the, the cap of uh, available villagers and don't uh, get a priest. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, real quick, let's tackle this thing, because we never actually programmed this. Um, this thing just needs to fire a redstone pulse out there every so often. Uh, to harvest some sugarcane, which is, is otherwise fully automatic. Um, we could do this with an observer or with a long redstone clock, but long redstone clocks take up space, and observers we don't have access to because we need nether quartz. Um, so meanwhile, I've just been sort of flicking that uh, whenever we come by, but nice it would be to just have that do it. So let's jump into the code and write a very fast, simple EE prompt to do that one. Okay, so I'm going to create a um, another EE prompt. We're going to call this one sugarcane.lua. And let's open this up. And I'm also going to open up uh, the water.lua because we're going to do basically the same thing. All we're doing is occasionally emitting a redstone pulse. The only difference is that in our version, we don't have to care about a modem at all. Um, let's see. Uh, so we don't care about a port. Um, this is using, yeah, okay, this the sleep command is, is valid. We don't need to open a port. We don't need to do anything like that. We don't need to pull any events. All we need to do is set the redstone. Um, actually, redstone needs to be set to 15, not 16. I mean, it doesn't particularly matter, um, but that should be fine. The only thing we're changing is uh, the amount of time that we're going to sleep um, at, between firing redstone ticks. Um, we're going to sleep for 18 uh, minutes, which is apparently the average amount of time that sugarcane takes to grow a tick, but there's a lot of variance. Um, I don't know, that's, that's fine, we'll just go with 18. This doesn't need to be perfect, um, it just needs to be good. Um, and then we're also not gonna fire up, we're going to fire um, south. Oops, uh, so let's replace up with south. And let's uh, change that value here to three. So yeah, here's here's our simple program. Set the output southbound with our redstone to uh, 15, and then set the output to zero, and then wait 18 minutes, and then do the whole thing again. That's that. This is your life now. Okay, so I'm gonna w get sugarcane.lua, um, and then flash sugarcane.lua onto an eeprom. Yes, and sugarcane. I'm just typing it because why not? And there we go. I can now remove the eeprom. And it has the name sugarcane. I'm gonna put the Lua BIOS back in there and we can make our way back up. Um, yeah, one thing that I would like to do and probably will do in an episode sometime soon is write a small utility that will let us uh, commit changes to files in our Git repository or our GitHub repository, I should say, um, from within the game and vice versa and just make it easy to pull uh, the repository up and down uh, because uh, it's getting a little tiresome. Um, so the only way that you can uh, change the EE prom in these things, um, it's the same as a drone, uh, just without the movement. Um, you get this. There we go. Okay. And yeah, I don't. I guess I crafted it without a micro without a, an EE prom before. Um, plop that there. There we go. Look at that. It's on and it did its first job admirably. It fired those off, and of course I happened to have flipped it earlier, so that didn't do anything. But now 18 minutes later, <laughs> it should do it again. And if we discover that we don't end up with more than what's currently in here over time, then we can revisit it. But uh, shy of that, I think we're good. Let, let me just toss, um, yeah, let me toss a torch in here and then we can just even block this up, right? Because 
no need to have access anymore. And boop. Nope. <laughs> okay. Basic. This is why I have to automate everything. Is because even basic block placement is beyond my beyond my skill level. Okay. So that's that done. Um, of course, our resource generation. These automatic farms will eventually want to consolidate and move into some sort of nice, compact, easy place to do all that. But whatever. Um, let's go down um, into the depths here and see. Uh, so yeah, I haven't been manually farming trees because I haven't been shy for wood on stuff. Um, although at some point it probably does behoove us to uh, take a either a uh, well, actually probably a robot. Probably a robot with a crafting upgrade, uh, because then the robot could build um, an axe. Although we should check, actually, if we even need an axe um, to fell trees, because uh, it wasn't able to punch. The robot was not a, refused to punch cobblestone, even though a player can do that um, over an extended period of time. Um, but who knows? A, a, a road, 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 blah, road. I want to say Roan because I'm trying to say robot and drone at the same time. A robot or drone may be perfectly happy to punch trees. I don't know. Um, if that's the case, then we don't have to worry about it. Oh, by the way, over here, yeah, this is what we need for the uh, chunk loader update. We need a piece of glass, two uh, gold, some tier three microchips. This needs to be an eye of ender and not merely an ender pearl. Um, and then, yeah, some obsidian and chip. Um, I do have uh, the drone case tier two because having discovered that we don't need um, the emeralds and only need the, the diamond chips to create the uh, what was it, the tier three component bus or whatever it was that was necessary. Um, yeah, so I've got all the parts in here ready to go. I put the stalker chip in there. I don't know why. Actually, there's no reason to have that in there, but whatever. Um, once we throw this in here, we'll see how the complexity is looking. If we can throw a... Uh, a redstone card in there or something or a wireless card. I don't know. We can throw something in there if it helps, but uh, there's not really anything we have to throw in here. All that this needs to do is go into a nether portal, try and move around and figure out basically the orientation of the nether portal because that's apparently random. Um, and then, so basically find its way out of the nether portal, build a wall around the nether portal, and then go back in. How hard could that be, right? I don't know. Apparently, yeah, we'll we'll have to see. I think we'll probably test that one, test that scripting creative. Um, and we'll go ahead and clear that off. Um, that does leave now um, more of our inventory system to work on. So this uh, now does work because we managed to fix the uh, the small little bug in the last episode, which was great. Uh, I even forget what that was. Uh, but uh, before we do that, uh, I want to dive into. The basement, the, the 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 area which shall not be named, the <laughs> the slaughterhouse. Okay, uh, clearly we're we're doing some breeding, so that's good. Um, is our drone still alive? The drone is still alive, and if we look here, okay, so plenty of seeds. Um, curious what happens. Oh yeah, never mind. We already have yeah, we already have this figured out. If any seeds get into here, then the robots disposing of them every five minutes or whatever. Anyway, um, cool. So clearly our farm is not up to the task of uh, keeping up with the robots demand for wheat, but that's okay. We're still producing plenty of sheep. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm happy with how this is going. And I, I mean, dangerous words to say, but I'm, I'm happy. I, I think we're ready to kind of just completely sign off of this project and call it done. Uh, say that our, our power needs are pretty much no longer a concern. I mean, that'd be great news, certainly. Uh, but with that, that does mean that our storage system is the main concern um, that we want to work on. So all that we've done thus far, if I pull up uh, stalker.lua, we have three commands that we want, that we decided initially we wanted to support. We wanted to be able to check the elements in a chest. Um, and then we want to, oh, yeah, that's what it was, is that we, our movement command was not precise enough. And... Uh, Actually, so we should say navigate to. Yeah, we should just put the sleep command in navigate to. That would make sense to me at least. Um, uh, where's navigate to? Well, you know, we've got to put it. We've got to enter it in in the in the real world anyway. So uh, we'll do that. Uh, but we have these two other commands that we want to be able to do: store an item and then fetch an item. And I think that the function signature is going to change here because I don't necessarily want to even say, "Hey, I want you to store cobblestone three of them." in this location, in this slot in that location, and then who to report to. I think I just want to say, um, I want you to grab 
some number of items from our pickup chest. And I'm not going to, and I'm, I'm going to tell you which uh, slot in the pickup chest and how many from that in the pickup chest. But that's it. I don't need to tell you the item. It's my, it's me as the, as the overseer. That's, it's my job to know what the items are and what you're putting where. Um, the drone doesn't need to care about that. Um, so we don't need to worry about it. Uh, yeah, let's just dive over into, uh, back into the, uh, the VM and start working on those remaining two commands. Okay, so thinking about this, I think one of the reasons I had initially envisioned uh, the store command actually taking a description of what it was supposed to store and things is that I thought we would be putting a hopper underneath the chest um, and therefore kind of letting Minecraft's logic determine um, in, in a world where we have multiple drones, um, then the drone could simply report, oh, hey, I happen to have gotten this thing in my inventory. What should I do with it? Um, and then we wouldn't have to worry on the controller side of figuring out who should deliver what. Um, but I think that's dumb anyway. And layout wise, I didn't like having a, a hopper there anyway. So uh, yeah, we're going to change this signature. And thankfully, all we have to do is just change it here and then we just have to make sure that when we test, we call it that way. Um, so store, um, instead of saying a stack, we're gonna call, we're gonna say bu -bu 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 -bum. Uh, slot and uh, size and then location. Oh, right, it can't be slot and slot. Um, call it input slot and, and we'll call this one um, storage slot. Uh, yeah, I like that. Um, and I guess then just for parity, let's say fetch, which the job is to go to a location. Oh man, fetch is, hmm. Do we, do we, well, fetch, so there's the output chest as well. Do we actually care what we're putting? Well, I actually, I think we do. Well, certainly fetch, we may not want to fetch the entire stack of whatever's um so actually um so yeah fetch is going to say okay so from this location grab uh, from this storage slot uh from this size and yeah i think we'll we'll leave that as it is for now with the understanding that if we do eventually care about which slot in the output chest we want to put things in, then we'll have to worry about it. Eventually, we'll have to worry about things like crafting as well. Um, but we can definitely cross that bridge uh, when we come to it. Um, mm, I'm, uh, yeah, premature optimization is the enemy of, of things. My guess is that probably what we'll eventually do is have some additional flag that we pass to these, um, which says, hey, uh, either uh, deliver it to the output chest or deliver it to some intermediary chest where we have crafting bots doing fancy stuff. And the orchestration for all of this is going to be fun. Um, but okay, now one other thing that we need to just be sure to keep in mind when we're looking at all of this is that I believe we have a limit of eight possible function arguments um, that can be passed over um, with the modem command. So not, uh, not something we're running into. And to be honest, I don't like structuring things this way anyway. But because we're dealing with primitives and don't want to deal with serialization, I'm, I'm okay with it for now. Um, but if we ever do have something that ends up being crazy complex like that, then we'll have to worry about it. Okay. So what is store going to do? Um, well, we know that already we are directly below the chest that we're going to take stuff from. So uh, we'll say in uh, suck from slot and uh, da, 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 uh, from the upward direction. I need to look that up. Right, it's one, we're, which because we should have known from water. All right, um, inventory suck from slot. And then uh, I think let's look at the API for this. Right. Okay. So suck from slot, we have to give it a side and a slot number and then yeah, optionally a count number. Okay. So that's what we want to do. We're going to suck from slot and, uh, the slot is going to be input slot and then size. So there we go. We've done it. Um, that is the whole putting everything into our inventory part of things. I'll go ahead and remove this for now or not remove it, but get rid of it for now. Um, to be honest, I think this is going to be easier than the rest of these. Um, the only thing that we're going to discover is, hey, some of this is going to be very repetitive. So, for example, uh, column row shelf is going to be the exact same parsing out of things. Uh, so that's a point where we say, okay, time to write a function. Um, so we'll say a local col row shelf equals parse. Um, 
not pras, parse, uh, location, location. And that should get rid of this line and these lines. Although we'll keep them, we'll keep them together for now. Um, they're a logical concept. Uh, let's go ahead and just add those down here. I mean, it doesn't particularly matter where we put them. Uh, parse location, uh, location. And if we paste these, all right, so local that. And so we will return two number call, two number row, two number shelf. There may be a cleaner way to do that, but we're not gonna worry too much about it for right now. We've now shortened up our check function, which I'm happy about because I was not thrilled about how that looked anyway. Um, you know what I'm gonna do as well? I'm gonna say that side is part of parse location because the logic of which side of the aisle we are looking at is basically something that we're solving at that same point or that is determined at the same point. So I'm gonna say we're just gonna return that as a fourth argument and put this logic inside here. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. So I guess that does mean we have to say call equals two number call. So we need to cast it first. We'll say local side equals four. If call equals two, the side equals five. Uh, then, yeah, we don't need to do any casting here, but we will say side. Cool. So this was just saying, hey, if it's an odd shelf, then we look at the east, and if it's a west shelf, then we look at the west, or whichever. I'm sure I had it backwards at one point, so I, I shouldn't even bother trying to uh, say it now. But okay, that cleans that up, and because we're gonna need to use side in here as well. Um, we're gonna do same stuff, navigate to uh, neutral, move to neutral and then navigate to the column row and shelf, um, which we do need to assign. Um, so uh, yeah, I suppose we should do all of our parsing of arguments at the, at the very top. So we figure out exactly where we're going. We take something from the slot, um, we move to neutral, then we navigate to column row shelf. Um, then we have to put stuff in and then we're gonna navigate from call row shelf and then move to base and then modem send uh, and now we're using the whole address thing. So we need to indicate to that we've uh, put the stuff in the right spot. Um, I mean, in theory, we don't need to actually send any sort of message, but I would like to make that part of the, the, uh, the protocol that we're assigning. Um, so we have here the idea that we're sending uh, the, the, the arbitrary message is, message is chest, blah, 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 blah. Um, our strategy in terms of determining the messages that we're sending back and forth is that they should make sense without you having to worry about context. Um, so I would like to send uh, stored, uh, call a row shelf, and now we don't have contents. Um, I, yeah, basically I'm just going to say, hey, by the way, I stored We'll see what was in input slot, uh, this many of them into column row shelf. And that's that that describes what we've done without us having to worry too much. Um, and again, we're dealing with this whole the address and the port are things that are done up here and could stand to be reused as well. Um, let's do that. Say local adder and port equals parse um, parse remote. And we'll just pass that remote. And one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast the uh, the port to a number. Um, so let's let's add a parse remote function parse remote remote and paste these in here. Adder and port, and we're going to return adder and then two number port. Okay. So then uh, adder port equals parse remote. And then where we have the two number cast down here, we can just say port. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, now this check function doesn't look quite as monstrous. The only thing that's a pain in the butt uh, that's that's obnoxious here is the crafting of uh, the message that we're sending back and forth. Um, and actually, I don't need to. I added this elf condition. Uh, elf condition. I added an elf condition. I added an else condition um, when I was debugging to try and figure out why we weren't getting items when the answer was just, hey, we weren't in the, the right spot. Um, we don't need extra content there. Okay. 
Move to neutral, navigate to blah, 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 parse remote. Um, yeah, so we'll just steal the parse remote stuff here. And yeah, okay, so putting stuff in is just going to be inventory, not stock from slot, but uh, let's see, store. No, that's to store things in a database component, which is not what we're doing. Uh, but, but, uh, drop into slot, right. Uh, in dot drop into slot and uh, side is the side that we have to worry about. Uh, slot is going to be storage slot and the number, uh, I, well, we don't need a number because every we've already we've already limited how many we picked up. We're putting everything in there. That's all we should need to do to store items. That's pretty badass. I'm excited about that. So fetch is going to be pretty darn similar. Let's you know let's copy this as sort of a, a baseline. Um, so column row shelf side parse location blah 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 blah. We're not sucking from slot. We're moving to neutral, navigating to the place. Then we're going to suck from a slot. Um, here we have to do some more stuff um, and more stuff. Uh, yeah, so we'll replace those with actual things. Um, so suck from the slot, uh, from the from the correct side, um, storage slot, and of the correct size. So grab you know three things from this storage slot, which is on our uh, west side or east side or whatever, um, and then come back. Um, now, the only thing that's different here is that we're putting things not into the regular chest. Um, fetched. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll ignore the actual logic first. I just want to get this message done. So we'll say, yeah, I fetched from location uh, in this slot um, of this size. And that's that's all. Oh, we need, yeah, we can remove this whole two number thing because that's that's no longer necessary in either of these cases. So yeah, we're just reporting to the controller that uh, that we fetched, and basically we're just passing this information back so that it can know with uh, with no context what just happened. Um, cool, and that just means that on the controller level we don't have to keep track of the currently in progress jobs necessarily. Um, okay, so once we've navigated back from that, puts us in that neutral position, which is a block below where we are charging. So let's jump over real quick into Minecraft Landia um, to figure out what needs to happen in here. Okay, so the drone, uh, the drone's neutral position is a block down, so it's above, right above this chest, um, this this storage chest that my cursor is over. What we need to do though is get uh, the drone to. Uh, so the drone will be here. The drone needs to move to. Underneath here, uh, let me plop down a block so we can easily see. And is this my, which one is my silk touch? I need to give these things good names. Wait, was that? Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. Come on. Thank you. Okay. Don't want to waste glass. Okay. Um, yeah. So the what we need to do is get the drone uh, under here, put the thing up there, and then use in the upper direction. So basically hit this. Uh, button to push the stuff into the output chest and actually oh yeah that's awesome then we don't even have to worry about anything uh well don't have to worry about anything we don't have to worry about uh determining which slot um it goes into in the chest because we don't know um i want to chest i want to test real quick um just because i know that we do have an inventory controller in here uh in this uh our, our mega awesome beefed up testing robot um, I want to try this real quick. I just want to say Lua, and we'll say uh, require uh, component uh, inventory controller. We'll say inv equals that, and I'll say inv dot drop into slot require sides up, and that that that's it. Nope, nope, nope. That's wrong. Okay, what's what's wrong about that? Oh, I think we need to give it a slot number. Okay, it says true, and okay, so we don't have to, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we could treat the droppers inventory as numbered slots, and we can. Cool, so that should work, and the drone should have no problem existing despite the fact that there'll be a button there. Um, cool, that will be awesome. Uh, yeah, and if we make sure to press the button every single time, then we can always assume that we can put it into slot number one, and never have to worry that, oh no, there, there may be something else in there. So we are assuming 
that everything goes well, but uh, yeah, that, that's fine. Let's jump back into code. Okay, so I'm just gonna write down before I forget, um, this is uh, Z plus two and X plus one. Uh, that's that's the the chain our offset um, to go from our neutral position to um, underneath our dropper. So uh, and well and I guess yeah we're using that right now. Um, so um, that is just move um, one zero two, and then I am gonna put in a manual sleep command here just because we weren't necessarily when we were looking at the chest we were not uh, in the right spot. Um, so we'll do the same thing here. Um, not gonna worry about it on the way back because you it, you can stack these offsets on top of each other and it'll be fine. Um, so at the end of things, we'll need to move back. So uh, negative two and then move to base, cool. Okay, um, so what are we doing? We're doing inventory drop into slot um, up, which is one and uh, storage slot. No, we don't care. We're giving it a side and the slot and we can say, hey, put it in the first slot. And that's great. I suppose, ugh. I suppose in theory, two drones could try and put things in at exactly the same time, but I hate that theory. <laughs> um, let's say a drone dot use, and we need to give it the side up, and that's it. I think that's it. Is that it? Let's write a test case real quick. Um, let's say let's well let's just rewrite our stalker test. I'm not even gonna bother printing stuff out. Um, yeah, cause I know, we, uh, I know we've changed this a little bit actually in the, um, in the game. Uh, so uh, we're not gonna, we're, I, 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 we're not even gonna worry about the check command, I think. Um, modem dot broadcast. Oh, we still have to figure out the whole handshake thing, uh, but that's okay. Um, what, okay, so yeah, the commands that we've defined um, I guess that, yeah, these comments are no longer uh, correct. Um, so I'm gonna say store, if we look at the signature, so I'm gonna say store from slot one. Um, uh, let's see, store from slot one, uh, 64, which is fine. I can just tell it more than what we put in there. So from slot one, uh, put this into uh, one, 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 uh, slot one, and report back to your modem address, one, two, three. I suppose in theory we should all, yeah, we should be listening to stuff, but bleh. Um, I'm, we're just gonna test that it actually puts things in the right places. Um, we can go ahead and just uh, comment this one out. Well, let's just delete it. So we're gonna open up port one, two, three. Um, who cares? Uh, sleep. Actually, I think we don't even have to open it because if we're not listening to it, we don't even have to care. Um, so don't, you know, we're telling it, go ahead and report to to that, but we're not gonna listen. Um, so we'll sleep 10 seconds. Then I'm gonna say modem broadcast uh, 6020 uh, store from slot two, um, two items. Well, no, just one item. Um, put that also in one, one, one in slot two and blah, blah, blah. And then we will fetch, uh, let's look at the signature for fetch. So fetch from uh, one, one, one uh, slot two, uh, no, slot one, give me 12 of those items. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So what we're saying is first, uh, go ahead and store 64 items of whatever's in the first slot in our input chest. Then go ahead and store two of whatever's, uh, sorry, one item of whatever's in the second slot in 111, and then fetch 12 of what's in the first slot in 111. So we should get 12 back of whatever the six, whatever we put 64 in was, if that makes sense. Okay, that seems like a fair enough test. We should then be able to check that um, end conditions. 
Uh, well, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's actually write them out. Uh, so uh, start conditions, um, input chest, yeah. Um, it's gonna have 64 cobblestone and uh, 64 dirt. And end conditions uh, should be that chest, uh, input chest should have uh, nothing, uh, empty, and then, let's see, it only took one, so it should have 63 dirt left. That makes sense. And the output chest should have, um, should have 12 uh, cobble, and 111 should have 65, sorry, 52 cobble, in the first slot, and uh, one dirt in the second slot. Okay, let's test this. So making sure our starting conditions are valid, so 64 cobble and 64 dirt. And nothing in slot 111. Um, I'm not gonna check that, I know that to be the case. Um, let's edit, um, uh, what was the stalker test? Uh, stalker test just to make sure, whoops, nope. Edit, stalker, test. Yep, okay, this has got our starting conditions and blah, 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 blah. Let's see what happens. Okay, uh, well, so, huh, I tended to call a nil value sleep. Yeah, because we forgot to put sleep in our test. <sighs> okay, we can change this to be os.sleep. Ah, okay, because yeah, we have we have OS, right? Uh, let's double check that OS. Yeah, because uh, we're not because we're on a computer, not in a BIOS. Um, okay, so it did do that first store command in theory. Let's go ahead and test that. I mean, we I mean, kind of kind of a bummer to be testing the the partial thing, but it does look like it stored something, so that's great. <laughs> uh, okay. And I mean, in theory, it shouldn't it shouldn't matter now that if we put this uh, put this in here. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's try that one more time. Stalker test, go. So it grabbed some stuff, and theory is putting it down there, and it's coming back. And in ten, well, some some other number of seconds, there we go. It's going down there. It's putting some more stuff down there, and it is coming back. And in some number more seconds, it should go down there, fetch some stuff, go down here. And this is the one that I'm, I think if it's going to screw up, it's going to screw up this one. I didn't hear any sort of click. Oh, you know what? I didn't put a button there. I didn't put the button back. Derp. Okay. <laughs> but that's, that, that part at least is correct. Um, let's hop down here. And where's, yeah, there's that button. Oh, come on. Actually, hang on a second. Let's go down here. Yeah, it's sitting in there and there's no button underneath that. Ah, ugh. Okay, look at me, not setting up my good good test conditions. Shame on me. <laughs> I think I'm fairly confident that, that this works, but dang it, we're gonna run it one more time to verify it. Um, it's If we go down here, I mean, it did, yeah, I got 12 cobble out, so it did exactly what it was supposed to do. The only other area that could be, well, no, it got the one dirt out. Perfect, okay. This does work, but we're gonna run it again for sciency reasons. Stalker test. Okay. It grabbed a full stack of cobble and put them in chest 111. Came up here and blah. One thing that we actually can do though is because we're reporting the that, hey, I just did this, is we can use that um, from the controller to say, oh, cool, then this, robot, this drone is available for new jobs. Um, so that's something else that we can do. Um, now, one other thing you might notice is that, hey, the drone in theory could do, oh, I didn't hear any click though. Well, let's let's check. Let's not assume. Nope, nothing in there. Ah, that is a bummer. Why did that not happen? So that stuff is in there. Hmm. 
I am confused. Why would that not have done stuff? Um, if I if I do it manually, is the robot not capable of using it in an upward direction? Oh, right. Oh, right. It's got to do that a whole bunch of times. Ugh. Okay. Well, you know what? If I can be honest, I'm not thrilled about the idea of the drone pressing the button anyway, and I'm not particularly keen on debugging it. I think maybe one thing that we could do... Um, hmm. Maybe one thing that I'd actually like to do would be to just set a redstone pulse um, from the computer itself uh, multiple times to get uh, to get to to get the stuff up into the chest. Maybe that's perhaps a better way of doing things. I don't know. I think I will I will have to do some thinking on that. But I think what we can say is that the drone script itself <laughs> uh, we're passed with flying colors. So uh, that is all that we have time for today. Um, we'll definitely have to give a lot of thought as to how we want our controller program to work, but we now have the ability to say, hey, um, some arbitrary worker, please go and uh, throw stuff in a chest uh, and, or get stuff back and, or tell me what's in a chest. And with that logic, we can get cool stuff back. We are still using broad broadcast. We'll have to figure out handshake logic, but that'll take place in future episodes. So until then, this has been Cheers, Kevin, and I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.